Hello and welcome to another edition of the Eternal Spirit Show with me, Paul Salmon. I'm a psychic medium and my guest today is Kevin Doe from Auric Interpretations. Hello, Kevin. Morning. Lovely to see you because we have met a few times we have, over yes. the years. And yeah. Last time we met at the Felix Stowe Mind, Body and Spirit That's right. Festival where you did take my Auric photograph. Yeah. Now, for those who don't know, what is an aura? An aura I know it's difficult, it's a big one to ask you. An aura is the, the metaphysical part of the outside of you. It's the, it's the energy that surrounds you, it's your consciousness. Um, it can be seen, felt or experienced. And a typical example is that you're standing in a room, someone walks behind you, you haven't heard, but you turn around. Why do you turn around? Mm. Because your aura sensing is telling you that there's someone there. That might be like, dislike, love at first sight. Yeah. All right, so we may have all felt this in our lives, but maybe a lot of us just don't know Very much so. maybe the scientific approach of what it is. You see, I can, I can actually feel auras, yeah. but I can't see them in real life. But I believe people can, can't they? That's right. There's, um, there's no hard and fast rules to seeing, feeling or experiencing auras. Yeah. Um, we teach many people different ways. For some people, just looking and closing their eyes and seeing a reflection. Mm. For others, it's feeling. We just ask, what do you feel? Mm. Um, and for another person, they can actually feel the space. Healers, particularly with sensitive hands, can walk into the space and they can sense and feel that. All right. Is that where we get the psychic knowledge from as well? Because we can't, I mean, maybe not mediums, but well, mediums as well, but psychics can pick up on the auras and it's got information very in much so. As well. Very much so. So there's a lot going on, Kevin. We um, we tend to not go with our feelings this this day and age, and what we quite often find is that people that feel their way will express and understand or information very, very easily. Mm -hmm. For those that are in the left brain and in the educational brain, they tend not to pick it up, so we have to teach them basically to, um, to let go mm -hmm. and just to feel, to feel with the heart and to be expressive more. You're actually from Aura Interpretations, uh, your website. I said Auric at first. Um, so you interpret auras and you do it with a camera, That's which correct. is, like I said, you took my photograph in Felix though. Yeah. But before we showed the photograph, and talk about the camera. How did you get into this? Many years ago, or oh, over the years, I've had many spiritual psychic experiences. I can never really put my finger on them. Mm. It just happened. Um, and about um, nine, ten years ago, I went to a mind, body, and soul show, and I see one of these cameras. Mm. I thought, I don't know. I just, what I felt led. I mm. had to go and have a reading. I had it done, it should have been a 15 minute reading, an hour later we were still talking and the lady said to me at the time, she said, you'll be doing this for me in a year's time. <laughs> at that time I thought it was that no way, no how. I didn't have the confidence to speak mm. openly. Mm. Um, it was unbelievable to me, rightfully enough, in a year's time I was doing it. So you're speaking more and it's sort of changed your life then? Very much so. It's, um, it's led me into many different parts. Yeah. Um, a path of self-discovery as well as um, the freedom to um, to explore yeah. many different areas of life um, and going beyond what I suppose the educational system tells us doesn't exist and yet we know it does. <clears throat> Let's have a look at my photograph you took and maybe explain, give me a little brief interpretation of the photograph you took of me. Okay, that's fine. All right, so Kevin, we've got my... Um, photograph here, which you took of me, with a little information chart. Maybe you could interpret my aura for me. I must admit, I was thinking of Christ at the time, thinking I might get a pure light surrounded with pure light, but I didn't. It, I got red. <laughs> and, uh, There's many different ways of reading an aura. There's mm. so much information, depth of colour, where the colour is, how big the aura is. Um, is the colour bright? Is it rich? Um, where is the depth? What's below it? There is so much. Yeah. Um, what I would say from your or straight away is that um, we're in the fields of red and we've got two distinctive areas within your aura. Um, straight away I'm drawn to the fact that um, we have a murky part around your head which would suggest that you're very, very active at that time. You're, you're busy, right. you're thinking, you're creative on the opposite side, we have a very bright aura. Um, again, we're still in the red phases, but it would indicate to me that you're very much an entrepreneur. I try to be, Kevin. Uh, trying is the word. 
<laughs> you're very good. You think on your feet. Yeah. You're spontaneous. Mm. You cut through where others would give up. Right. Um, you have a, a very strong sense of self mm. and what you want, what your desires are. The um, Another side of red is that um, it's the creative passion. Mm. It's the strength. Um, every every colour, every energy has a positive and a negative. But depending on where you are at that time, if you was at the beginning of a project, or as I see you on that day, you were very active, you were busy. Mm. So this is very much um, this is very much an active guy thinking on his feet, spontaneous, uh, a real survivor. So it always do change. So later in the day, if I became, if I thought different. The colour would change, maybe? Um, they change colours layer. The way we read, the way I read colours is I see the top colour and I see what's underneath them as well. But usually what we find is that um, people have a, a predisposed colour that they come into with their lifetime. Um, that changes off and on. With some people it's distinct, with others, if we've... Um, We've done a story with people over two years, six months, six months, six months, mm -hmm. and you see that um, maybe in the first three or four photographs, three, they usually stay the same. Oh. But if they're in a process of development, yeah. the whole thing is cathartic. We start to, people go away with their photographs, they sit, they take on board. Yeah. We may give them something that they might not like to take on board at that yeah. time, but actually sitting in their own private space, they can actually own that. Mm. And if it's something that, um, is a personal thing that's gone on. It's really deep. It's quite difficult for someone to give that to you, a stranger, yeah. and for you to work with that straight away. So were you trained in interpretations, or is it a natural gift as well? I was never trained to do this, yeah. but uh, I am a trained psychotherapist counsellor, oh, right. so okay. the two go hand in hand very well. Yeah. So if, um, if I've worked with someone that obviously has, um, has some really difficult things to process, actually having the skills to, um, to know how to support that person mm -hmm. after the reading has gone on mm -hmm. and to point them in the right direction so they get the right help and support. There must be a lot of self-satisfaction then with what you do, your work. Um, I've been asked that question many times and to me it's like being a kid in a, around a Christmas tree. Mm. To see, um, to meet people the first time and actually think what will their aura be? Um, yeah. What I'm seeing is not always what they think they're displaying. Mm. So yeah. to actually to think on my feet and to actually be able to embrace that person's energy, it's not always easy because a person can be closed, mm. others can be very open. So we we gently feel our way into the person's energy, um, and what is there will present itself. So Kevin, let's talk a little about this camera of yours. Now it doesn't look the average type camera to me. It looks rather just like a box, which it is. But how does it work? It's quite a complex system. Um, we have here a biofeedback plate, of which we have two. How the system works is it picks up the um, bioresonance, the electromagnetic frequencies of the body. And what it does, it takes the information into the camera. Mm. The front part of the camera, the white box that we see sitting beside me, is a computer with light emitting diodes on the back of it, we have an industrial Polaroid camera. What happens is the, um, the information is fed into the camera and it, um, it resonates with the colours and the colour frequency responses of our emotions. Mm -hmm. Max Lucia was um, a guy that you can do colour test online. Mm -hmm. He was a colour psychologist and he set the colours down many, many years ago. The, um, the camera takes a photograph drops a mirror down and then while the plate is still malleable mm. it projects the colours onto the photograph. So there's two ways that this camera works. One it's picking up the, um, the electrostatic, electromagnetic energy of the body mm. and two it's taking the photograph of the person to place them in the shot. Mm. So my understanding to date is that you can't really use a camera singly on its own to take all the information, the colour information. Right. You can use a standard camera to capture yeah. the aura, which you can see on my website quite clearly, but to actually get the colour information, that's a process that needs a dual setup. Mm. And don't come cheap either. I won't ask you no, how much they certainly are, don't. <laughs> but um, it's a valuable bit of equipment. I remember when you took my photograph, I had to put a hand on each of those magnetic plates, didn't I? Yeah. 
Excellent. And I believe you do workshops and you take this camera to different places and give talks? We do. We do um, healing groups, spiritualist groups, spiritualist churches. Um, the sky's the limit to what we do because the, the system, not only this system but the new system now is, mm -hmm. is live aura. Mm -hmm. And what we're able to do is to demonstrate what we perceive with the technology to be the act of healing. Right. So there's a vast learning curve with this now. Energy, everything has an energetic signature, yeah. whether that's from a crystal, a piece of fruit, a live plant. Mm -hmm. um, there was an old experiment that was done years ago where they cut, it's called the phantom leaf effect, mm -hmm. and they photographed a leaf with a, the early curly in photography, and then they cut a piece off the leaf and photographed it again. Mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise, the part that was cut off still existed in the electromagnetic field of that leaf. Right, but I believe there's a new way of filming always. There is. There you is. have to tell me about this because I, because I know nothing about this whatsoever. It's software orientated right. in as much as it takes the information from the blue plates, the biofeedback plates, and it places it into a software system. But what it does, it gives us, it gives us many possibilities. It, we can project this up onto a live stage, which we've done in yeah. live shows. It gives us the ability to um, to demonstrate light frequencies, which are magnetic resonance. Mm. Light split from the sun is um, is both sound and light. So instead of taking one photograph, is it like a video? Film? That's right. It's um, it works at sixteen frames per second. Our average camera works at twenty four frames per second. Mm. So it's um, it's very close to a modern video. Yeah. But just slightly more um, more jerky than that. Uh, the difference is that there's a vast amount of information going in via the camera, via the feedback. So I, I could be sitting here moving, if you like, and it could be photographing me. And would I see the colours change a bit? Sometimes? Very much so. You'd see lots of changes going on. Really? There's, um, there's lots of links on the website, which we'll, yeah. you'll be able to see demonstrations of that. I'll give that a mention. The website, um, address. the website is www.aura-interpretations.com Right, or if that's too much for you to remember, um, contact me here at Eternal Spirit Show. I'm sure people will get in touch. Uh, what's the future hope? Where do you think we're going next, Kevin, after this next way of filming always? Have you got any idea? There's, um, there's some real challenges going on with, um, with Aura. We're living in a world now that is actually recognising that we are not just a physical shell of the body, that we are an energy-based reality. Mm. And that energy-based reality is now bringing this sort of equipment into diagnostic processes. Uh -huh. There's various uh, equipment on the market now where you hold two cylinders and it gives you a diagnostic of what the energy of your body is. Mm -hmm. um, the body's either working in phase or out, in harmony or in dis-ease, disease. Right. Okay. So those systems are excellent. Russians are working very hard at this moment in time in bringing this back to a diagnostic usage again. Mm -hmm. So although our particular equipment is not, um, not for the medical fraternity, there are systems out there that work by resonance, by feedback, mm -hmm. that give excellent diagnostic capabilities. I mean, I, I remember looking at well, I still do at churches, church windows and paintings. You see the aura or halo. That's correct. Now, is that representative of the aura, do you think? Well, from looking at biblical texts and other documents around the world, yes, the Hindu tradition shows all the, um, the chakra points on the hands, the energy mm. centres. And if you look over my shoulder to, the, um, to my poster behind me, you can yeah. see the energy points yeah. very, very clearly. Years and years ago, they used to tell us that these energy points didn't exist. But we find out that MRI scanners can actually detect them quite easily. They line up with the central endocrine system of the body. Right. So the 2,000 plus year old system has been validated. Mm. So Kevin, what other uses are there for this equipment? There's many, from multi-page printouts mm. to using it live on demonstrations. Um, I guess a good example of that, two years ago I was very lucky to be recruited by Tony Stockwell. I was asked to um, co-present a live show to a live audience. I've never done anything like that before, yeah. but it was an incredible experience. Um, we took people out of the audience, we put them live on stage, and we, I was able to demonstrate the act of healing using the process of the camera with two auras showing the interaction between the two. It was an incredible experience, but it also gave us the ability to 
to air our equipment to yeah. a, a larger public. Now these cameras or machines are very popular because when I attend mind, body, spirit shows, there are queues, people lining up for a long time to have their photograph taken and interpreted. Uh, but so you're, you must naturally be a psychic anyway to give interpretations. But as a medium, how do you fare on the medium side of things, Kevin? Uh, I'm trained medium. I've, um, I've done many workshops with different people, Tony Stockwell Studio and others uh -huh. um, around the country. Um, I guess it, it developed over the years, and what I found was that um, I felt experiences. I didn't always see things. Uh -huh. Sometimes I would hear something, but many experiences brought me to, to the same point. It's yeah. like... Um, many strings to the same bow really. Mm. So mediumship, sometimes I might be doing a reading and I know instantly that it's bereavement. I sense that I have someone standing beside me or I sense that there is someone around the person. Mm. Um, the last show that i done literally a couple of weeks ago up in Leeds, mm. I had a lady who was searching very, very deeply, very, very upset. And I got almost to the end of the reading, which was more about her and where she was at that time and basically picking up mm. the, um, her life and starting out new. And right at the end of the, uh, the conversation, I was impressed with me, please tell her I love her and I'm very yeah. much around her. Yeah. And I went into another reading for another five minutes at that point. Mm. Even though it was time for me to move on, it was important at that time to honour the information that was offered to me, so it was appropriate. The lady was so pleased, as was her friend that came with her, that um, that was what she was looking for. So that's like a healing process for her, wasn't it? Very, very much so. that she could move on, maybe. Very much so. Have you got another little story to uh, tell us about? I mean, I mean, is there one dramatic picture that sticks in your mind, for instance? Um, there's been many over the time, and I think probably children are the most interesting phase at this moment in time. Children coming in with great awareness and we had a young lad in Clacton of all places, mm. um, a very small show, it was a great experience, lots of people. First we'd done photographs of two parents, the little boy wasn't interested at all mm. but um, later on he decided after they went home he wanted his done and he decided that his was going to be very bright green. His parents said well we can't really afford it so this little lad which I believe was Billy at the time um, he um, he said, I want it done, I want it done, and they, they felt maybe they should. Mm. So rightfully enough, we put him on the system, his hands were big enough to, um, oh, yeah. to take the photograph, and uh, rightfully enough, he was green. But uh -huh. he then went on to tell us many things about his parents and the grandparent that was no longer with them. Wow, amazing. Um, so yes, his, uh, his ability was um, far beyond what his parents had perceived. Mm. But the benefit was that... Um, in the past, he used to get up in the middle of the night and he'd be sitting praying on the bottom of his bed. Good grief. And they didn't understand what he was doing. From having the aura photograph done, mm. they could see that um, when he gave them something, mm. there was a greater element of truth about it than, um, than they had perceived previously. So he was a very psychic little lad. Excellent. Um, and others the same. I guess the, um, the most obvious one is a couple of weeks ago, again, same show. Um, a guy and his girlfriend came and had their photograph done. Mm. I, for whatever reason, we couldn't do both of them. It was at the end of the show, doors were closing, etc. So I said to him, if you come back tomorrow, bring your photograph with you. I'll do your, um, do your reading in the morning. He came back in the morning, unfortunately he forgot his photograph. Oh. So it was like, okay, what am I going to do with this? I, I sent him away, I said, come back in about 10 minutes. Let me think about this for a few moments. So I, um, I sort of, I just chilled out for a few moments and meditated on it and I thought, psychometry, set of keys. Mm. So I asked him back, he came onto the stand and I asked him, I said, if you've got a set of keys or something personal, I'd like to hold it and I'll do your reading that way. So he said, is that possible? Mm. So I said, well, it's the first time I've done it for a long, long time, but I'll give it a try if you're willing. Mm. We, uh, we sat, I gave him some incredible stuff that um, the guy's face, he almost fell off his chair. You know, he was amazed, and so was I, to be quite honest, because mm. I hadn't trusted myself no. to use that um, that method of working. Psychometry is an excellent tool, and it's mm. another string to the bow. Mm. Right, Kevin, outside of all this holistic cameras and what you're about, have you got time for hobbies or anything else? 
I certainly have. Um, I love to walk. Lake District is a um, place I love. It's very close to my heart. Um, I have dogs. I spend a lot of time walking with them. But I'm also into um, anything and everything that's outside of the norm. Mm. Um, you know, my life has been full of experiences, and they seem to be coming to a focus point. Where do you think you're headed? Um, I don't know, to be quite <laughs> honest, because I could have never perceived where I am at this point now. Yeah. But uh, I've just started doing film extra. Uh, oh, it's something that um, my daughter put me in touch with, and I thought I'll give this a go. So um, let's turn up some very, very interesting projects. Right. That's a whole other show then, maybe. That's a whole other show. Kevin, thanks for being my guest today. It's been enlightening learning, learning about your equipment and the oars. And thanks for watching. Goodbye and God bless. Thank you.